Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today, we have a math video on unit conversion specifically for the American system for the math portion of the ASVAB military placement exam. These unit conversions are really hard, especially if you didn't grow up with them. What I'm going to do first is go over what those conversions are, and then we have 10 practice problems. You can't really learn to juggle by watching me. you got to practice, and that holds true for math as well. So have paper and pencil out in front of you, preferably a notebook, and do the problems, take the notes, and the more you repeat it, the easier it is to remember it. So I, I know the whole world is on the metric system, but here in the U.S., only in the U.S., we are on the standard system, sometimes called the imperial system. Um, and it, it's pretty complicated because the numbers seem pretty random. I'm going to go over different lengths, different weights, and different volumes. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. The first units of measurement are under length. A foot is about 12 inches long. So I can remember that because my foot's about 12 inches long. Size 12 shoe is 12 inches long. So there are 12 inches in one foot. And then there are three feet in a yard. So a yard is about the same as a meter. So a yard's about this, and a foot's about this. And then an inch is pretty small. An inch is like two, two and a half centimeters. And then this is a really hard one to remember. There are 5,280 feet in a mile. I approximately remember it because Denver is a mile high city and it's about 5,000 feet above sea level. So again, in length measurement, 12 inches to the foot, three foot to the yard, and then 5,280 feet to the mile. And then in weight, there are 16 ounces to the pound. I'm not too sure where that's from. Um, and then there are 2,000 pounds to the ton. This is called the US ton. There is a metric ton that is 1,000 kilograms. There's about 2.2 pounds in a kilogram. So a metric ton is about 2,200 pounds, so it's more than this. And actually in Britain, there's a long ton versus a short ton as well. And it has to do with the differences in gallon sizes and stuff. But we're only looking at the U.S. system. So underweight, again, there are 16 ounces to the pound, 2,000 pounds to the ton. And then in volume, this is actually really complex. There are ounces by weight, and then there are fluid ounces as well. So there are eight fluid ounces to a cup. There are two cups to the pint, two pints to the quart. I know this is hard to remember. You just got to do a lot of repeats and then four quarts to the gallon. And I think for metric conversions, I think there's about two liters to the gallon. So again, one more time, there are eight fluid ounces to the cup, two cups to a pint, two pints to a quart, meaning that there are four cups to one quart, four quarts to the gallon, or 16 cups equal one gallon. Okay, now that we have those down, but the way we're going to do these problems is we're always going to be multiplying by one for our unit conversions. And I'll show that as we practice these problems. So with that said, whoops, let's go ahead and move to our practice problems right here. You want to pause the video, do the problem before I do it, unpause the video, and watch how I do it. So really step one here is I always circle and highlight the important parts of the problem one and a half pints of milk, if you only have a measuring cup, that measures in fluid ounces. So we're talking about weight, how many, no we're not, we're talking about volume. How many fluid ounces of milk do you need to use? So if you have it in your head that there are 16 ounces to the pint, then I'm gonna do 16 times 1.5. As our problems are all without a calculator, I could do this in my head by going 16 times 1 will give me 16. 0.5 times 16, or half of 16, is 8. I'm going to add those together to get 24. 24, ooh, pen's not working. 24 fluid ounces. So correct answer is answer D. The way I got 16 ounces to the pint, let's go back to this. There are eight ounces to the cup, two cups to the pint. So that means I got two times eight, 
gives me 16 ounces to the pint. I know they are, I know they are hard. Okay, number two, a truck carrying 5,000 pounds, what is the weight in tons? So I have 5,000 pounds, the abbreviation, kind of strange as it is, is LBs. 5,000 pounds, I want this to equal tons. So I want my answer to be in tons. I multiply this by a factor of one, and that's my conversion unit. I am multiplying by one, doesn't affect the value of it. I know that 2,000 pounds are equal to one ton from the table above. I multiply by one, doesn't change the value of it, but what it does, it allows me to cancel my units. And that's gonna give me tons in the numerator and no units in the denominator. Now I have 5,000 divided by 2,000 tons. Those zeros will cancel with those zeros. Five over two is my answer. I don't see it over there. I need to do a decimal approximation of this. Two goes into five two times with one left over. Two and a half tons is my answer, or 2.5 tons right there, answer B. Okay, problem number three. A carpenter needs to cut a 12-foot board into pieces that are 18 inches long. So I need to do 12 feet divided by 18 inches. They are different units, so i got to get the same units. Remember, 18 inches, double tick mark for inches. I'm going to multiply by 1. 12 inches equal 1 foot. My inches cancel. I could reduce that fraction. 9 over 6, or 4 goes into, or 3 goes into here 6 times. 3 goes into here 4 times. Still even, I could reduce it again to get 3 over 2. My inches cancel. This is in feet. So now I have 12 feet divided by 3 over 2 feet. So I have all my units are the same, they're all feet. The way I divide fractions is I multiply by the reciprocal. So I have 12, 12 times, multiply and I flip that over, 2 over 3. I have no units because my, I'm dividing feet by feet, they cancel. Three goes into 12, four times, four times two is equal to eight. So how many pieces can I have? I can have a total of eight pieces right there. Again, I know these are hard. It's a hard fraction problem, hard conversion problem. If you're having trouble with the fractions, um, go ahead and go to one of my videos specifically on fractions and operations with fractions. Okay, let's move on to number four. A marathon is 26 miles long. How many yards is this? Well, this is a tough one because I don't actually have yards to miles, so I'm gonna have to go to feet first. Or if I know that 5,280 feet, I wanna figure out how many yards that is. Well, if I divide that by three feet, that's gonna give me yards, right? Three feet to the yard. So if I divide this by three, that's gonna give me how many yards? Three goes into five one times, two, two. Three goes into 22 seven times to so give me 21. Bring down the eight. Three goes into 18 six times and zero, right? 18, zero, zero. So 1,700, 60 yards is equal to a mile. So I have a marathon is this many miles. How many yards is this? So I have to do this number right here, 1760 times the number of miles, 26.2, right? These are yards, these are miles, and that's gonna give me the total number of yards. First is two times zero is zero. 12, carry the one, 14, 15, carry the one, three. Then I have my placeholder. Then I'm gonna do the six, 
0, 36, carry the 3, 42, 45, carry the 4, 10. Double placeholder here, and then 2 times 0, 2 times 6, 12, carry the 1, 14, 15, carry the 1, 3, then I'm going to add straight down 0, 2, 11, carry the 1, 11, 6, 4, then I'm over one place right here, so I go over one place right here. 46,112 yards is my correct answer, which is answer A. That's really a hard one. I don't know if there's an easier way to do that one. Um, I, if I had a guess and I was out of time, I could have eliminated these two, because these two are so close, it would have been one or the other. So that's number four. Number five. Bucket holds two and a half gallons of water. How many quarts of water can the bucket hold? So if you go back to page one, four quarts, four quarts equal a gallon. So I know it's going to be a lot more than two and a half. So I have those two and a half gallons times that ratio of quarts to gallons four quarts to the gallon. I know gallons go down here so they can cancel to give me quarts, right? Two and a half times four, well two and a half times two is five, so I'm gonna double two and a half twice. Five, 10, correct answer, A, 10 quarts. Here's a time conversion here on number six. I have 45, minutes, and I want seconds. This is an imperial system. This is just time. So I'm going to multiply by 60, 60 seconds to the minute. So I'm just going to multiply by 6, and then when I'm done, add a 0. 6 times 5 is 30. Carry the 3, 24 plus 3, 27. Don't forget that 0. How, a person runs 45 minutes, how many seconds? 2,700 seconds, correct answer, answer B. Okay, number seven. A package weighs three pounds, eight ounces. What's the package weight in ounces? So we need to know that there's 16 ounces to the pound. So I'm going to hold this. I'm just going to put this on hold for a second, and I'm going to take those three pounds, again, abbreviated LBS, and I know there are 16 ounces to the pound. And again, I do this because I'm multiplying by one. It doesn't affect the value of it. But now my pounds cancel and gives me ounces. Three times 16 is 48, 40, 48 ounces, OZ or ounces. So I get 48 ounces. But don't forget these eight ounces you put on hold. 48 and 8 ounces gives you a total of 56 ounces. Correct answer, answer A right there. Okay, problem number 8. Oil drum contains 35 gallons of oil. A container could hold two quarts. So I have to go gallons to quarts. 35 gallons. I got to multiply it by this factor of 1 again. I know that 1 gallon is four quarts. That's not going to give me my answer. That's just going to give me how many quarts. So I'm going to double that. 35 doubled, doubled, 7140. So again, gallons cancels, and this gives me 140 quarts. Natural distractor would be B. But it says that container holds two quarts. So how many containers can I get? So I have to divide this 140 by that two to get correct answer. Answer A, 70 right there. Okay, last couple of problems. Maybe in the future I'll do some metric conversion problems, but for this video we'll end it here. A box of cookies weighs 1.2 pounds. How many ounces is in the box? So I have 1.2 pounds multiplied by 16 ounces to the pound. 
That's ounces. So my pounds cancel. So I have to do 1.2 times 16. And actually, I could look up there. 1.2 is more than 1. So the answer has to be more than 16. There's only one answer here, more than 16. So it has to be answer D. I can multiply it out, but I could also use my answers as part of my solution. A car travels a rate 55 miles per hour, per one hour. How many miles will it travel in two hours and 30 minutes? Well, I know 30 minutes is half an hour, 60 minutes to the hour. So I'm going to convert that two hours and 30 minutes to 2.5 hours. So that means I'm going to have to multiply it by 2.5 hours. My hours will cancel, and that's going to give me miles. How many miles? That is what we were looking for. So I'm going to have to do 55 times 2.5. I can't really eliminate any of those answers. I know it's not 110, because 55 times 2 is 110. So I'm going to go 55 times 2.5. 25, carry the 2, 27, placeholder, 10, carry the 1, 11, 5, 7, 3, 1, decimal place is over 1, decimal place goes over 1, the correct answer, answer D, 137.5. Again, I know these are tricky, let me scroll back to the top here, um, I don't know if there's a good way to remember these. You know, especially if you never grew up with them. So just a quick recap, 12 inches to the foot, 3 feet to the yard. Those are probably the most important ones, those two right there. 5,280 feet to the mile. A lot of people don't know that. 16 ounces to the pound, that's by weight. 2,000 pounds to the ton. Then in volume, 8 fluid ounces equal a cup. 2 cups, 1 pint. 2 pints, 1 quart four quarts to the gallon. So just kind of keep looking over that and hopefully it'll start to stick and then use our idea of multiplying by a factor of one, canceling units for those unit conversions. Uh, keep studying, keep working at it, and you'll do great on the ASVAB. Good luck.